Hey everybody, OCD Mikey here, and I am making a follow-up video to the last one I did, which was about colored sound because I don't think people really are catching my point here. Uh, so I'll drive it home a little uh, more direct um, by pointing out the other complete bullshit thing that they say in hi-fi is it's what the original engineer intended you to hear. That is complete poppycock. I'm trying to have a little more grace with my words this year. Okay? It's complete rubbish. Okay? Um, I'll tell you why. Okay? First of all, there is no one engineer for an album. Okay? If one guy happens to be able to hold on to the whole part of the production, then that is very rare. More likely than not, it's three different engineers in three different places, three different studios, three different states maybe, three different countries for all it could be. It doesn't matter. They don't care. The first guy is the tracking engineer. Okay? So this is the guy that chooses the microphones. He chooses the what microphones. He mics up all the equipment or he has somebody do it for him, but usually the tracking guy is going to set all the mics. We're talking about in the studio. If it's at a live show, then it's coming off the board. So it's going to be the guy that's mixing on the board. Okay. But in a studio, we're going to presume like a studio album we're talking about here. <coughs> in a studio, uh, you're going to have the tracking engineer. Okay. So that tracking engineer is going to set it up on his rig in his studio using his speakers and using his ears. And he's just going to take the damn tracks. His job is not to mix or master or do any of that, unless it's an uncommon circumstance. He has been hired to make the tracks, okay? That guy's going to record the tracks. That rough mix is going to go to a mixing engineer. That mixing engineer in his studio now, different than the first studio, different speakers, different room, different ears, different likes in Sonic, okay? He's going to then match the levels of the 24 tracks or whatever it is. And he's going to raise and lower the levels of the tracks and mix that and make the mix, the final mix. He's then going to take those 24 tracks. He's going to dump them down to a two track, what's going to be the mix. And then that mix is going to go to a third guy, the mastering engineer. Okay. That guy's in a different state. He's a different studio, another different rig, different ears, different things that he likes, okay? They're going to choose him for how he likes to make things sound. Certain engineers are known, certain mastering engineers are known for making mix or, or final masters a certain way, and so they're chosen. So now that guy is going to change it, and he's going to make it. So to say what the original engineer intended, there's... Three freaking engineers, they're getting paid to do a job, they're intending to get paid another time and do a good job, so they're going to do what their job is. First guy's going to record the tracks, the second guy's going to mix the levels, the third guy is going to fine tune the EQ on that last final mix, then he's going to dump it to a two track master, and then there you have what you're going to make the final production piece from, okay? So to say what the original engineer intended is complete farce, folly, BS, crap, caca, merda, whatever you want to call it. Merd? I don't even speak French. Nonetheless, it's junk. It doesn't make sense. It's not true. They want to get hired again. They're going to make it sound as good as they can to their ability but they're not going to try and expect that you're going to hear exactly what they hear. Do you have any idea what a mastering rig is like? I mean, my local guy who's my friend, who is a true bona fide mastering engineer, has like a million dollar rig, okay? With giant Eggleston, the same Bob Ludwig speakers. Uh, I mean, they're giant. He mixes standing up, you know? I mean, it's like... Okay, there's no way you're going to hear that at your place. So to think you're going to get the same thing that they intended, and the purpose is to not preserve what it sounds like in the production facility. That's not the purpose. The purpose of these people making this piece of music is to sell a tour. It's to make a hit song. 
They're going to color it however they want to to make it sound beautiful and juicy on 90% of people's systems, which is crappy systems, car radios, phones, things like that. Very few people have hi-fi rigs. So they're not trying to make it for the hi-fi people or make it all preserve its integrity. No, they're going to make it as juicy and colored with vocal harmonizers, with auto-tune, with all sorts of electronic stuff where they slice and dice and mix it up to make it sound pleasing to the market. What does the market buy? That's what they're going to make it sound like, okay? So to think that the artist wants to preserve it or what, there's very, very, very few. Donald Fagan, perhaps. Mark Knopfler, perhaps. I doubt even Elton John, you know? I mean, very few people get involved artists get involved in the recording process they're not going to get into the work of it they already work their ass off why would they get into the production and care about all that kind of stuff very few will okay there are exceptions to what i just explained there are people out there tony manassian okay he makes recordings he is a tracking guy who does mixing and the final master and he produces them he records one shot using two microphones and his recordings are absolutely stellar. This man knows how to choose a microphone. He knows how to set a microphone. And when you set a microphone, man, you can turn it a half inch to one direction and totally change the way the recording sounds, okay? So don't fool yourself into thinking we're trying to get what the engineer wanted or what the artist wanted. That's not what you're getting. You're getting something that is somebody's idea of what's gonna sell to the masses. How can we sell a tour? If it's something that's not tour centric, like a small act or something like that, they're going to want it to sound like rock and roll, tough, strong, or they're going to want it to sound, you know, beautiful, like a, like a, like a symphony or something like that. But trust me, um, it's not what you think. And there, there is no making it sound like the original engineer intended is like the dopiest repeated dreck that hi-fi people say. It's one of those things that is the dumb, dumb, repeated stuff that you hear people say about hi-fi. That's how they describe it. Oh yeah, it's like the original engineer intended. It sounds just like it. Sounds real analog. You know, it's like, well, <laughs> oh my God. You can't hear digital. It's the only thing we can hear is analog. <laughs> oh my God. I could go through a list of all the things that are commonly regurgitated in hi-fi that absolutely mean nothing and that tell somebody that knows what's up instantly that you don't know what the hell you're talking about, okay? So don't say it's about what the original engineer intended because maybe Neil Young, you know, and, and the other two guys that I mentioned, you know? Other than that, forget about it, okay? Forget about it. Okay, so for any of you... Uh naysayers out there that think uh this guy doesn't know what he's talking about um let me show you something uh see what those are these are 24 track session reels okay so this is the recording from the first part of what i discussed okay this is the 24 track original session reel you know who Joni mitchell is don't you sure you do Myron Burke. You might know who Roger McGuinn is. You might know some of these other bands. I don't. DT Faircloth, Live at the Palomino. That sounds like Hollywood. Um, these are, are from Hollywood. Most of these are all California. Um, from the late 70s. Look at that. 75. Okay, so these are session reels. Okay? And then these here are the rough mixes and the masters they're the two track so they're dumped down to two track okay i used to work at a recording studio um, my brother owned a recording studio and this was something that was a complete build out downtown minneapolis um it was legit so i know firsthand how it works because i have the evidence i have the tape machines i have the original session reels I have the two-channel rough mixes and masters. So in case you're wondering if I, you know, am talking out my butt, no. I'm talking because I know. See you.